I want to go back to the genomic dashboard to show how we can do the same thing with repeat expansion mutations like C9 ORF72. So we also have C9 repeat data associated. I set the gene name for the repeat expansion. I set is pathogenic. And then when I update, now we're pulling our, from the cohort, we're finding the folks who harbor repeat expansions. Each of these people have a, nor we have two copies of, a set of most genes in our genome. The first copy in each of these people is considered normal with repeat um, counts of five, two, eight, two, et cetera. Their second copy of with repeats much larger. So um, considered uh, in ALS literature, there's a general consensus that greater than 30 repeats is pathogenic. Some people have said greater than 24. Um, each of these individuals harbors a repeat longer than 30, and so defined as pathogenic. If I wanted to then look at this sub-cohort of folks, I again copy their IDs, go back to the cohort viewer, paste these in, set it again to ALS patient, make sure that the sign up is any year, update. And now we have our new cohort. These folks, 300 weeks of accelerometer data, 327 voice recordings, et cetera. Not all of them reported a family history of ALS, meaning some of these people were sporadic ALS patients um, as diagnosed, but did end up harboring the C9 mutation, which is an important distinction. Here we have less enrichment, a little bit more enrichment for, for women. I'm not saying that means anything. It's just I'm pointing out that you can see it quickly. And what we see here for C9, there's at least in our cohort, we have wild variability in clinical presentation with some people having very slow progression and some people having much faster progression. And this is all people harboring the same or similar mutations. So there's a lot of power though in being able to quickly look at these data.